Lewis Howard Latimer was born on the 4th of September 1848 in Chelsea, Massachusetts, and was the youngest of four children born to George and Rebecca Latimer. Six years prior to Lewis's birth, his parents had been slaves in Virginia. They managed to escape and sought freedom in neighbouring Boston, but shortly after arriving, George was recognised as a fugitive and jailed. The arrest was protested vigorously by the community. There was a trial, and the attempts to recapture George and return him to Virginia caused considerable agitation in Boston. When the trial judge ruled that Latimer still belonged to his Virginia owner, an African-American minister paid $400 for his release. Although George was now a free man, he was still extremely poor, working as a barber, paper hanger and in other odd jobs to support his wife, three sons and their daughter. With this very humble background, Lewis Latimer's family could only afford a few years of grammar school for him and his siblings. He still developed a keen interest in the arts, but especially in drawing, a skill that would benefit him hugely throughout his life. By the time of his adolescence, the Civil War had engulfed America, and in 1864, at the age of 16, Lewis enlisted in the Union Navy. At the close of the war, Lewis was honourably discharged and secured employment as an office boy with the patent law firm Crosby and Gould. Keen to advance himself and utilising his interest in drawing by closely observing draftsmen at work and reading books on the subject, Latimer taught himself mechanical drawing. His perseverance and passion paid off, and Lewis eventually managed to become chief draftsman at the firm during his 11 years. In these years, Lewis met and married Mary Wilson, whom he would also go on to father two daughters with. Post-Civil War America saw a huge increase in inventions. Patents were being secured by their thousands, as industry and industrialisation was booming. Lewis secured his first patent in 1874 for the water closet, an improved toilet system for railroad cars, and in 1876, Lewis was hired by Alexander Graham Bell. Bell was working on his telephone invention and was in a race to get a patented design before anyone else registered a similar device. Latimer's expertise in draftsmanship meant that on the 14th of February 1876, Bell's telephone patent was filed just a few hours earlier than Bell's rival inventor, Alicia Gray. If it had not been for Latimer's expertise and knowledge, Bell may not have had the fame that he still holds in the world to this day. Alexander Graham Bell was not to be the only famous inventor Latimer would work closely with in his career. In 1880, Latimer began to work as a mechanical draftsman for Hiram Maxim, founder of the US Electric Lighting Company and fierce competitor to Thomas Edison. Here, Latimer learnt so much about light bulbs that by 1881, along with Joseph Nichols, he registered a patent for a light bulb with a carbon filament. This was a major improvement on Edison's original paper filament, which would burn out very quickly. Shortly afterwards, he received another patent for the process of manufacturing carbons, which was an improvement on the method for the production of the carbon filaments in light bulbs. With his knowledge and expertise in this field, he was eventually hired by the Edison Electric Light Company in 1884. Here, he worked closely with Edison and became his patent investigator and expert witness, protecting Edison's patents and inventions against imitators. Impressed with Latimer's technical knowledge, Edison encouraged Latimer to write his first book, Incandescent Electric Lighting, a practical description of the Edison system. Latimer would also go on to become one of the charter members of the Edison Pioneers, where he was the only African-American member of this highly prestigious group. Latimer's inventing talents weren't limited to light bulbs. In January 1886, he registered a patent for an early air conditioning unit apparatus for cooling and disinfecting. In many ways, this invention can be seen as the grandfather of the modern air conditioning unit. He also obtained a patent for locking racks for hats, coats and umbrellas. Although this invention is now fairly obsolete with our modern fashion, in Latimer's days, this invention did see lots of use in restaurants, theatres and office buildings. Latimer remained with Edison's company throughout the years as it merged with other companies to form General Electric, the same company that's still active today. He continued his work in the legal department until 1911, where he spent the rest of his career as a patent consultant to law firms. As a true Renaissance man, Latimer managed to pursue his love of the arts alongside his scientific career. 
He was a keen poet, playwright, painter and lute player. He was also very active in the Unitarian Church and taught mechanical engineering and English to new immigrants coming into America. Lewis Latimer came from so little during a time in history where he was a second-class citizen and it was through his hard work and determination that he managed to rise up and make important advancements in many technologies that are still in use today. Although not as much of a household name as his contemporaries or colleagues, he truly deserves a place alongside them. <laughs>